Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Theologue Talks, a mission series uh, sharing being done by us here, the One World Missionaries Information in Chicago, Illinois. My name is Jorge Satino, SVD, and I will be your host for today. The word missionary work often implies being sent or going to different lands to, pro to proclaim God's gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ, and to build communities, to uh, meet people where they are. However, there are different aspects to missionary work. One of them that we would like to emphasize today is pertains that to academics. And we are delighted to have one, uh, a fellow the vanguard missionary whose uh, career and whose ministry uh, throughout the years is being done in this particular field. He is not only a Devon World missionary priest, he is also a professor and a world-renowned missiologist. Father Steve Evans, SBD, thank you for joining us today. Jorge, it's really a pleasure to be here and to talk with you about my life and my ministry. Should we jump in? Sure. Let's do it. First of all, let's take it back to the roots and to the beginning. Mm -hmm. Could you please share with us a, a little bit about your vocational journey as a divine world missionary? Sure. It's a little bit undramatic, but uh, I, probably all my life, as far as I can remember, I always kind of wanted to be a priest. And I remember uh, I was in eighth grade and I was thinking of going to the high school seminary. And then my parents decided to move from where I was in Baltimore on the East Coast to California. So I thought, well, that's the end of that. I'll just uh, do something else with my life. Well, we moved 3,000 miles away, and we moved one mile away from a new Divine Word Seminary in Riverside, California. Five of my eighth grade classmates in Catholic school were going to that seminary. They were my friends. And so I went along as well. And really the rest is history. I discovered not only my vocation to the priesthood, but also my vocation to the religious life and also my vocation as a missionary. Oh, wow. Now, after your ordination, if I, if I, don't, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, before we had Steve Evans, the world-renowned missiologist and beloved professor at the Catholic Theological Union here in Chicago, we had Steve Evans, the Divine World Missionary Priest. And I believe one of the first assignments that you had as a Divine World Missionary Priest was sent to the Philippines. Could you please share a little bit more about that? And what are the times, what are what you uh, recollect from your time there? Let me say a little bit about how I kind of got my missionary vocation. Mm. I was um, sent to Rome to study theology, uh, and I was in Rome for several years before I was uh, took my perpetual vows and was ordained. And I remember the first year I was in Rome, the first Christmas I was in Rome, I went to see the Pope in the Vatican Square. And the Pope was giving Christmas greetings in all different languages to all the different people that were there, you know, thousands and thousands of people. And I said, I want to be part of this. I want to be part of making the world a better place and bringing people together. And I, I feel like, I sure, I had my missionary vocation before that, but that's when I really got my passion. And so when I uh, took my perpetual vows and I was ordained, uh, I uh, applied for the Philippines. And I went to the Philippines, I was a professor, but I was much more, because when you're in a situation like that, you have to be much more. I was doing formation in the, it was a diocesan seminary, I was doing formation there. In the summers, I was working kind of as a, a bush missionary in parishes in the, the north of the island of Luzon, and you know, doing real missionary work, like you know, going miles and miles on a, uh, a boat uh, to travel to remote villages and uh, you know spending time in in poor villages with a lot of poor people and so forth and 
then that's what kind of nourished also my academic life as well. So it was a great time. I was there for almost nine years and I really, really enjoyed myself. Uh, and then eventually I came back to do a doctorate uh, at the University of Notre Dame and uh, began working at CTU and that's how I began to develop into the person that you know today. And yours is a perfect example of how we SVDs uh, try to live out our uh, missionary vocation. It's always uh, wearing many hats, right? We are sent to one place, perhaps for a specific mission, and then once we get there, we see the needs of the church and the needs of the local community and try to help out in any way or shape or form that we can. Um, so you mentioned CTU, and it's a, it's a place that you, you have called home. And for those of us who may not know, CTU stands for the Catholic Theological Union here in Chicago. It's a conglomerate of uh, different religious communities mm -hmm. where seminarians, information, men and women, uh, religious and lay, uh, go there to study theology, but more than study, to do theology, right? And you have played a part of, uh, a big part of that uh, formation of new uh, uh, leaders in the Catholic Church tomorrow's missionaries when it pertains to not only SVDs, but to everyone in general. Uh, and it has been your home for many years. Um, what has been one of the joys that have brought this uh, life and career of a professor? I would say two things. Maybe first of all, the students that I've had. Mm -hmm. uh, hundreds of students over 30 years of teaching from all parts of the world, uh, lay people, men, women, different religious, fellow SVDs. It's just been such a privilege and I've learned so much from my students. And then my fellow faculty members. They have just been remarkable. I, I, it, it's a real community of scholars. And I, I, we, we, we have uh, uh, helped each other, we've supported each other, we've challenged each other over the years, and that has been absolutely fantastic. So the atmosphere at CTU was one that challenged me to grow and supported me in my growth, and I felt appreciated there, both by students and also by faculty members, and then people outside of CTU where I would begin to give talks and uh, share my writings and things like that. So uh, that's those I think are the two highlights, you know, my, my, my colleagues and my students. If there are students or colleagues uh, of yours watching this interview, I'm sure they would be shaking their heads um, attesting to that. Um, now let's follow up with um, a scholarship and your writings. Sure. In your career as an academic, and also as an SVD, you have written many uh, articles and countless books. However, one of them is this one, Models of Contextual Theology. And in this book, you argue or you make the premise that there is no such thing as universal theology because all theology is contextual. Could you please uh, explain uh, or share a little bit more of that? and also the context in which this book came about. Sure. Well, when I was in the Philippines, uh, when I arrived in the Philippines, one of the first people that I met there was a man by the name, an SVD, by the name of Father Leonardo Mercado. And he said to me, I just come with a licentiate, like a master's degree from Rome, and he said, Steve, are you coming to the Philippines to teach Roman theology or Filipino theology? Wow. That blew me away. I didn't really know what Filipino theology was. I just thought that there was theology. And so I began to read and I began to study Filipino culture and I maybe even foolishly uh, started in my first semester teaching a seminar on Filipino theology for my students uh, at the Diocesan Seminary in Vigan where I taught. 
uh, it was really amazing and I learned so much. But as I studied and we reflected, there were all sorts of conflicting ideas. Um, Filipino theology is about culture. Filipino theology is really about something like the theology of liberation influenced by Latin America. Filipino theology is translating things like um, consubstantial into Tagalog and, and uh, other Filipino languages. So I, what is Filipino theology? And then one day it hit me. There are all different kinds of models of Filipino theology. And it all depends on what models you feel are appropriate in a particular situation. I wrote an exploratory article about this. I taught a course actually as a guest professor when I came back from the Philippines at CTU on this. And then my great colleague and dear friend Bob Schrader said, why don't you write this up in a book? Oh. And so I began to do that. And the results, uh, or the result is models of contextual theology. And from uh, John, the one-word missionary, uh, I, it was uh, liberating, you know, to, especially to read that phrase, because then it liberates us to, it allows us to be able to do theology from our own context. In my case, a Guatemalan SVD. Yes. Uh, so thank you so much for that. Uh, you're welcome. It, it, it's just an amazing thing. What my doctoral professor said that we all have one good idea in our life. <laughs> Maybe this was my one good idea. Well, I'm sure we have. Uh, uh, you have. You have. Uh, you have had more than one good idea, <laughs> and perhaps this is a good segue for what is Steve Bevan's writing today. What I'm working on today is a theology of the church that tries to explain the missionary nature of the church. Pope Francis says that the church goes forth as a community of missionary disciples. Vatican II says that the church is missionary by its very nature. What I'm trying to do is explore that, to unpack that, and try to understand the fact that everything that we do in the church, every Every person in the church is called to be a missionary. Maybe not like SVDs, a foreign missionary or a cross-cultural missionary, but everyone is involved in making sure that they live out the gospel and witness to the gospel in their lives. So we are, as church, a community of missionary disciples. So that's what I'm trying to gradually, gradually unpack, and it's my dream to finish this book. Uh, well, I hope maybe in a couple of months. Oh, well, so you're getting close to that point. I have about 200 pages written, yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, as, as you have said, uh, you know, the church, or Vatican II teaches us, right, uh, the church is missionary by its very nature. And then we're also missionaries. Uh, you uh, pointed out that everything that we do is missionary. Right. And Steve Bevans, or Father Steve Bevans, is a giant in the field of missiology. Will you please explain to our audience what is missiology? What is, what is this field that, some, that perhaps it may not be uh, known to many, but is so important to the life of the church? When you ask me that question, I want to see. How, I want to say, how many hours do you want me to talk? <laughs> because it is something that I've spent, uh, you know, forty years kind of reflecting on. But basically, what it is is to reflect in faith on how the church engages in the witnessing and the preaching of the gospel. What it tries to say is that God is the real missionary and that we as members of the church participate in God's work. And how do we do that worthily? How do we do that effectively? 
That, in a nutshell, is what the study of mission is. Like theology is the study of God, and biology is the study of life, so missiology is the study of mission. And as a divine world missionary priest, um, or as a divine world missionary, um, we, everything that we do, the ministries, that we are engaged ourselves in uh, are from are coming from this uh, particular um, mission-oriented mindset. Uh, in your case, as uh, as a professor, as a scholar, and also as a religious missionary, uh, could you please share with us, perhaps from a more personal uh, way, how has your scholarly work enriched your uh, religious missionary uh, vocation as a divine world missionary? You know, Jorge, I would start the opposite way. Okay. I would say that my being a missionary has influenced my scholarship. And then my scholarship has influenced my missionary life. So it's a kind of a, a, a circle, what you call in fancy language, a hermeneutical circle that just keeps on going on and on. So the fact that I am engaged with people here at the Theologate, uh, in different cultures, in my parish ministry that I'm engaged in here in Chicago, uh, when I travel and meet people from so many different cultures, this so enriches me. It enriches my scholarship. And then I think my scholarship has... Um, uh, committed me more to this kind of intercultural, cross-cultural uh, mission type of life. And so it goes back and forth. Uh, one enriches the other. And, you know, when you do this for 40 years, you get pretty rich. <laughs> and we also benefit... Uh from, uh, from the uh, vast uh, richness uh, of your scholarly work. And I think a follow-up question would be, uh, in the mission field, and that's vast and has diff it looks uh, you know, differently, um, depending on the context and cultures in which we find ourselves. And I'm curious as to how is it that you also benefit from the stories that you hear from fellow Devon World missionaries working in different parts of the world. The big, I guess the word that I would use as I, and I do travel quite a bit, and I travel uh, to SVD locations, I travel, uh, uh, I've been very much involved in the World Council of Churches, and so I'm involved in, in uh, ecumenical work. Uh, I, I, I talk to other groups uh, really all around the world. I've taught in places like Australia, and in, uh, in Rome. But I think the word that I would use most is the word of inspiration. Okay. I remember one of the things I love to do is go to our uh, uh, renewal program at NAMI when there's usually 25 SVDs mostly from Indonesia, from India, some from Latin America, from Africa. And I teach them about the theology of mission. And they share with me their stories. And I listen to these men who whose lives have been in danger from attacks by radical Hindus, uh, that they've been uh, you know, working in, in tremendously difficult situations like in South Sudan, uh, like in, in different parts of, of Africa, people who uh, teach high school students and college students in Japan, and I'm just amazed 
at the the, uh, the commitment, uh, uh, the love for other people, uh, the love of the gospel that they bring. And that's just like, you know, I come back from something like that and I'm just energized to say, and, and the fact that they say, oh, what you're saying really helps us in our commitment. And I say, oh my heavens, <laughs> you know, this is, it's what a, what a privilege uh, to, uh, to be able to inspire people and be inspired in turn. Wow. Um, I guess to wrap up this interview, um, you have been, uh, you retired, officially retired from the Catholic Theolog Theological Union back in 2015. Mm -hmm. However, um, as the Bonkor missionaries, there's no such thing as retirement. You're still giving your 100%, you're busy, uh, you know, writing, traveling, trying to share the wisdom that you have accumulated in those uh, uh, 40 plus years of uh, academic work and also missionary life, your missionary life. Um, can you please describe what is the life of a retired uh, a professor emeritus? like sure one of the things I, I want to say too about retirement and in, in some ways I f feel guilty that I stopped teaching because I love teaching so much but I felt that I needed to step back in order that CTU would hire younger professors. You know, we have to go on, and, and I think that's really important. So I was not tired. I, I love teaching. I wanted to continue, but I felt that this was really important for me. And I think this is important for all of us at a certain point to step back and let the younger generation, as it were, take over. But I've been busy. I've been writing. I've been, I, 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 you know, it's given me a chance to travel the world, at least before COVID. Uh, and as you say, even now, you know, pretty much once a week, I'm doing something uh, of a talk or attending a conference or whatever it is. So I feel like in many ways I'm moving in, in a, a stronger way than I was even as a professor. I have time now to share my accumulated wisdom and skills and so forth with the rest of the world. Uh, I have time to be involved in the World Council of Churches and, uh, in, in ecumenism, as I mentioned before, uh, that I would not have had so much time before. Um, reading the uh, works, uh, the manuscripts of younger colleagues, uh, um, all sorts of things that I wouldn't have had time for if I were in full-time teaching, but I have time for now, and I think I'm contributing almost, if not just as much, as I did as a, as a teacher and a professor at CTU. Um, I think that's a perfect segue for our last question, which is, um, what would you like to say to younger generations who are maybe interested in a missionary way of life and also to those of us who may be interested and perhaps sometimes a little bit afraid of pursuing a life um, of a scholarship such as what you have done? If you're at all interested in a life of teaching and a life of scholarship, I would say go for it. It's not easy. There's a lot of preparation involved. Uh, there's languages. There's uh, uh, a master's degree to complete. There's a PhD to complete. And then you just begin. And you uh, begin to write books. And you begin to develop your classes. But as you do it, and as you work hard, it's just been the adventure of my life. And I really wish more people could have that kind of adventure. I think it's a wonderful thing for a religious missionary and a religious missionary priest to be involved in. Something very different from parish work. But it's something I think that really 
can inspire in many ways many more people that you can uh, than, than, that you can in other uh, in other ministries it's hard work but as I say it's an adventure and I really encourage anyone who has the ability or the interest you don't have to be the smartest kid on the block I'm certainly not but if you're excited about it and if you're if you're committed to it you will grow in ways you never thought possible as you are known as professor uh, Steve Evans as Dr. Steve Evans, as Father Steve Evans. But for those of us who have the privilege of living with you here at the Theologue, we know you as simply Steve. Uh, one, a man who wears many hats, a man who is uh, not only a fellow comfort, a fellow divine world missionary, uh, a friend, but also a mentor. Uh, one who encourages us, the new generation of divine world th uh, missionaries, I'm preparing uh, here in Chicago for not only uh, a life of mission, the adventure of missionary work, but also the adventure of scholarly work. Uh, so for everything that you do for us here at the Theologue, for your students at CTU, and for the wider church, Thank you very much, and thank you for joining us today. It has been a privilege. It's been a privilege for me, too. The title that I most want people to address me by is Steve. Steve. And Steve, we have a question from one of our followers. And the question is, how many countries has Father Steve, or in this case, Steve, uh, visited as a missionary and also as a professor. Do you keep a list or? I don't, no, I don't. But I'm sure it's been, it's been many. many. Probably about you know, 20 or 30 countries over, over the years. Um, I've really only been, I would say, a missionary in the Philippines. But I've spent uh, a good amount of time in Europe and a good amount of time in Australia. Uh, I, I love to go to Hong Kong. I've been there many, many times. And I love to, to work there and I feel so sad with uh, the problems that uh, Hong Kong is having uh, in these uh, in these days but many 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 countries and uh, I uh, I have friends uh, and uh, students I think in all of them and uh, in the spirit of gratitude how would you say thank you uh, or is there a way that you st may still remember from your time in the Philippines where the Filipinos express the gratitude? In Germany, we say, vielen Dank or Dankeschön. Uh, what would that be in the Philippines? Uh, I would say in the language that I learned, that I didn't speak perfectly, but that I learned and, you know, celebrated the sacraments in, it's the language of Ilocano, Agyamankayo. 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 Or uh, Salamat in, in Tagalog. <laughs> so, Father Steve, Salamat or Agyamankayo. 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 Uh, that's the singular. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much uh, for watching. If you like the content of, uh, the content of this uh, video and the content of all of the videos from our Theology Talk uh, channel, please do not forget to like and to subscribe. And God bless you. And please uh, uh, come back for the next episode. My name is Jorge Satino, and this was Father Steve Evans.